many ways, the Scala is Skoda's strongest ever offering in the family hatchback sector, even though its engineering isn't strictly family hatchback based. It offers value, efficiency and more interior space than almost anything in the segment. If you're out for something sensible in this class, there's a lot to like. Skoda's family hatch models aim to bring you something a little extra, and here's another of them, the Scala. You get engineering and a price that's very super mini-like, but more interior space than the pricier Golf or Focus-sized family hatch models the Czech brand is pitching this car against. Skoda has yet to really crack the family hatchback market, which in some ways is strange given the considerable success that various generations of its Fabia Super Mini have enjoyed. Last time the Czech brand attacked this segment, it was so desperate to succeed that it brought us not one family hatch design, but two, the very Skoda-like Rapid and the more conventional Rapid Spaceback. Today, the company also fields a couple of cars in this segment. This Scala slotting in alongside the brand's more familiar and only slightly larger Octavia model. Unlike the Octavia, this car doesn't get the full-sized MQB platform you'd also find in a Golf or a Seat Leon. Instead, this model is based on the more compact MQB A0 chassis used by super minis like the Volkswagen Polo and the Seat Ibiza. Still, that's a big step up from the crude old underpinnings that featured in those old Rapid models, and it allows for the fitment of some elements of the Volkswagen Group's latest camera-driven safety technology. The Scala name comes from the Latin, meaning stairs or ladder, reflecting this model's claim to be a leap forward in design and technology, at least for a Skoda. Plus, as usual with its offerings, the brand is offering it at slightly lower prices than the opposition and includes a range of simply clever design features intended to make everyday life with this car just that little bit easier. It all adds up to a contender that aims to bring something a little different to the family hatchback class. Time to put it to the test. If you're a typical Scala buyer, you might be tempted to skip this section, find out what the engine options are, check the outputs, can you have an auto box, all the stuff we'll cover in our market and model range section. Job done. Just how relevant are drive dynamics in a car of this kind? Well, key players in this sector have made great handling an important facet of family hatchback ownership. There's a reason why Ford's Focus is still a bestseller here. And even if you don't care about driving on your door handles, what is arguably the most important element of drive dynamics, ride quality, is critical to the satisfaction you'll get out of owning a model of this sort. Not all contenders in this class get this aspect right. But this Skoda does. Other smaller cars that use its MQB A0 chassis, like the sixth generation Volkswagen Polo, have impressed us with the way that relatively crude torsion bar damping can be tuned to provide a really supple quality of ride. This Scala delivers that too. You can't have everything, of course, because it lacks the more developed multi-link rear suspension setup you'd find on, say, Hyundai and Kia models in this class, but not on volume Golf and Focus variants. It's caught out by speed humps and sharper potholes, especially if you pay extra for the larger 17 or 18 inch wheels. But over commoner tarmac tears and highway undulations, it flows beautifully, with at least some of the kind of big car feel that Skoda promises. Which is perhaps a touch ironic, because we're assuming that a lot of the reason you'd buy a Scala rather than the other family hatchback model in your Skoda dealer's showroom, the Octavia, is because you want the feel of a slightly smaller, more manoeuvrable car. The Scala is around 30 centimetres shorter than an Octavia, and though that might not sound all that much, if you were to drive the pair back to back in a crowded urban environment, you'd find a small but significant difference between the two cars in terms of manoeuvrability. The Scala has a super mini style nippiness that the Octavia lacks. You'll feel a touch more confident in it in a crowded car park or on a narrow high street. True, the feeling isn't massively different to that you'd get in a more commonly dimensioned family hatch segment contender, like a Golf or a Focus, 
But even against models such as these, the Scala scores with better all-round visibility that makes this car easier to slot into tight spots. Of course, it loses out to such as the Golf or the Focus in terms of handling feedback. These cars can genuinely reward at the wheel. And we think contenders in this class, like the Mazda 3, are even better. In a Scarlet, there's none of that. Throw this Skoda into a bend with any sort of vigour. And though grip levels are admirable and the relative lack of body roll even quite surprising, there's little sense of enjoyment in the process through the light steering. Does that matter? Only you can decide. We certainly understand why Skoda has no plans to bring us a sporting VRS version of this model. You'll want to know about engines. Almost all Scarlets will be sold with a power plant that must occupy the vast majority of Volkswagen Group output these days, the conglomerate's three-cylinder turbo TSI petrol unit. As usual, it's available in a starter 95 PS form that in this case manages 62 miles an hour from rest in 10.9 seconds en route to 117 miles an hour. And as usual, we'd suggest that you ignore this engine in its feeblest guise and opt instead for this unit in its uprated 115 PS state of tune. That gets you a 25 newton meter torque increase that delivers a small but significant little extra dose of pulling power. So there's less need to row the car along with a gear lever in town or change down when overtaking on an open road. The 62 mile an hour sprint time in the 115 PS model improves to 9.8 seconds en route to 125 miles an hour. But more importantly, it's worth knowing that if you want this three cylinder engine, you have to have the 115 PS unit if you want to have the option of DSG auto transmission. This a seven speed box. We haven't opted for that power plant here. Given that whole big car feel ethos we referenced earlier, we thought we'd try a Scala fitted with the largest petrol engine it's ever likely to get, the 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS unit that you'll also find fitted to every model bigger than this one in the current Skoda catalogue. It can be had with manual transmission, but here we've elected to test it with that DSG Auto Box, in which form it dispatches 62 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds on the way to a maximum that no Scala owner will ever approach of 136 miles an hour. This dual clutch gearbox is predictably slick in the mid-range, but we're not sure we'd choose it in this car unless we were really urban bound. Apart from the fact that when wedded to the one and a half litre engine, it pushes the price of this car beyond the level most prospective owners will want to pay, we found this transmission a bit hesitant when pulling away from junctions. And it can be found hunting around for the right ratio with a touch of indecision when rapid bursts of acceleration are needed. If you occasionally undertake longer trips in a car of this kind though, this package is still worth a look. A comment that also applies to the other Scala engine option, the 1.6 litre TDI diesel, which as usual is supplied in 115 PS form. Black pump fuel has fallen from favour in the class these days, partly because of the current environmental zeitgeist and partly because the alternative three cylinder one litre petrol engine we mentioned earlier is nearly as cheap to run, yet is much less expensive to buy, more frugal to tax and runs on cheaper fuel. Not many prospective Scala owners will be able to overlook these drawbacks or the TDI unit's rumbly demeanour at start-up or at lower speeds. But if you can, in order to get extra pulling power and open up the possibility of regular fuel returns of over 50 miles per gallon, then you might be the kind of rare buyer who'd rather like this Skoda in its sole black pump fueled form. 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 10.1 seconds in a TDI on the way to a top speed that's 125 miles an hour in a manual model or 124 miles an hour in the alternative DSG Auto. What else might you need to know? Well, highway refinement's fine for a car of this kind, and there's an optional active cruise control system if you want to make long trips just that little bit easier. If you're regularly engaging in those, you might also want to specify the optional blind spot assist and fatigue sensor features. Features like these would certainly be a better home for your cash 
than the dynamic extras that Skoda offers with this car. A drive mode select system that tweaks steering feel, throttle response and, on DSG Auto models, gear shift timings too. A system that can also be mated to sport chassis control, which lowers the car by 15mm and allows the drive modes to switch between two chassis settings, normal and sport. As we implied earlier though, if you opt for this kind of setup, you'd rather miss the point of this car, which is to deliver everything you need in a family hatch and not much that you don't. There's a place for sense and sensibility, as this Scala's keen to remind you. Give a family hatchback class car a platform designed for a smaller super mini and you'd expect it would be more cramped inside. Skoda claims to have reversed that logic here and done so with a sensibly stylish twist. It's all rather impressive. But let's start with a look at the exterior packaging, which is all rather smart for what used to be a budget brand. Headlamp detailing has become a bit of a Skoda trademark over the last few years, and these tapered units with their brand-typical crystalline elements are key to the look of the front end. A little disappointingly, though, unless you pay extra, their LED functionality only applies to the dipped beam and the daytime running lights. They sit either side of a vertically slatted front grille with a top central ident for the prominent Skoda bonnet badge, which is flanked by angular lines that flow back towards the windscreen. The profile also emphasises Skoda's growing confidence as a mainstream brand. You might even think it rather Audi-like. The reasons why lie with perfect proportions, defined surfaces and flowing lines. A sharply sculpted mid-level crease gains extra three-dimensional emphasis as it eases back over the door handles. And an angled lower swage line flows up from the front wheel arch to give the flank some shape. Separating arches housing alloy rims varying between 16 and 18 inches in size. We've got 16-inch Alaris-style alloys here. As for the rear section, well, that'll look quite different depending on how the Scala model in question has been specified. This car's rapid spaceback predecessor was marked out by an optional prolong tinted rear screen, which extended classy black tailgate glass right down towards the number plate, delivering a contrasting look that really lifted the aesthetics and worked especially well on pale coloured cars. So Skoda's carried that design feature forward here, though unfortunately not as standard. You have to avoid entry level trim and pay extra to get it either with a tailgate design pack, which also adds these full LED rear lights with scrolling indicators, or as here, with an exterior design pack, which in addition extends the black glasswork beyond the roof spoiler with a panoramic roof, and also includes that missing full LED functionality for the headlights. Whatever the spec chosen, the tailgate section features this spaced out Skoda lettering, now established as a brand styling signature. Earlier, we referenced the MQB A0 platform this car sits upon. Yes, as mentioned, it's ostensibly a chassis designed for super minis. Hence, it's used by Volkswagen's Polo and Seat's Ibiza. But all Volkswagen Group MQB underpinning packages have extensive variability built into them these days. And Skoda's taken full advantage of that to considerably extend this platform's wheelbase to a Golf or Focus light length of 2000. 649 millimetres, which, it's claimed, will free up superb standards of cabin space. Let's see. Take a seat at the wheel and it doesn't initially seem all that spacious. If anything, this part of the interior actually feels a little on the narrow side, but it's a step up in quality, not only from this car's rapid spaceback predecessor, but also from its Volkswagen Group in-house rival, the Seat Leon. There are soft touch plastics on the dashboard and the doors, the kind of thing that until recently you'd never have seen on any compact Skoda hatch. Plus the piano black trim, classy silver door pulls, cross-hatched upholstery and silver dash mid level decor strip that you'll get provided you avoid base spec models are partially successful in lifting the cabin atmosphere beyond the rather dour grey ambience that previously tended to characterise affordable models from this Czech brand. 
To suit the modern zeitgeist, there has to be a huge freestanding fascia-mounted infotainment screen, and sure enough, you get that here. This appendage will only be of the shiny glass-fronted touchscreen type if you've avoided baseline trim, which gets a cruder, non-touchable 6.5-inch display. In this mid-range 8-inch form, it deals effectively with the usual DAB stereo, Bluetooth, phone and car informational functions and is embellished with Skoda's SmartLink setup, the key tool for bringing the best functions of your smartphone into this car via the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and MirrorLink systems. Pay more or specify top spec trim and two more high-tech media options become available to you. First, you can get this sensor screen upgraded to a 9.2 inch Amundsen package that also includes 3D navigation, a 64 gigabyte hard drive, gesture control activation, and an optional Wi-Fi hotspot. And second, you can have a fully digitalized virtual cockpit screen to replace the conventional dials in the instrument cluster. To be frank, we don't think it likely that many typical Scala owners will want to pay the premium for this kind of sophisticated kit. Spec this car up like a Christmas tree and you rather miss the point of it, which is to provide most of what you get in a Golf for a heck of a lot less money. With that in mind, we think it probable that likely customers will be minded to forgive the unyielding lower dash plastics and switch gear that in some cases seems to have been purloined from older sections of the Volkswagen Group parts bin. Your dealer will prefer you to focus on what Skoda calls its simply clever features, little touches that other manufacturers don't bother with that this checkmaker thinks will make everyday life with this car just that little bit easier. Things like the little pockets in the sides of the seats, which also have stowage areas beneath, the clip on the windscreen A-pillar for your parking ticket, the chilled glove box that keeps drinks and chocolate cool, and our favourite touch, this pull-out umbrella built into the driver's door, an idea borrowed from Rolls-Royce. None of which would really matter much if cabin ergonomics hadn't been spot on, but Volkswagen Group products don't tend to get that kind of thing wrong these days, and this one certainly hasn't. It's easy to get a really comfortable driving position thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment. Lumbar support is standard across the range, we were pleased to find, but the seat design itself could do with a bit more side support, and we did find it induced slight aches after really lengthy trips. All-round visibility is pretty good thanks to slim front windscreen pillars. And your over-the-shoulder view is much better than it is on most Focus class rivals, which you'll be pleased about if you're stuck with base trim on this car. Because at that level in the range, you don't get standard rear parking sensors. Earlier, we touched on cabin storage. Aside from the simply clever features we mentioned then, this car also gets the basics right here. So the door bins, which include a big bottle holder, are big, and the glove box is huge. There's overhead storage for your sunglasses and a useful compartment by the driver's knee. Twin cup holders are provided by the thankfully conventional handbrake with a 12 volt socket nearby and you get a further ticket clip on the driver's sun visor plus a large open stowage area in front of the gear stick which is presumably where you're supposed to charge your phone since a couple of USB-C points are provided nearby. It's a pity there are no further ports in this deep box between the seats that would enable you to charge your handset out of sight of prying eyes. Time to take a look in the back. This we're told is where that lengthy wheelbase we referenced earlier should really pay off. So let's see. That's broadly how it plays out too. Despite that super mini derived platform, the Scala outshines all its most obvious family hatch segments rivals in terms of leg and headroom. Yes, even with its smart optional panoramic glass roof fitted, which brings much needed light into the rather drab grey themed cabin and incorporates an integrated 
electric sliding blind. There's 73 millimetres of knee room and in a standard model, 982 millimetres of rear headroom too. Predictably, it's not as roomy back here as it would be in Skoda's other family hatch sector model, the Octavia. That car is, after all, around 300 millimetres longer and 20 millimetres wider. But there's as much space back here as a typical buyer in this class is likely to need and plenty of room to slide your feet under the seats ahead. A third seated occupant will be slightly compromised by this rather prominent central transmission tunnel. And it's a pity that you don't get a rear central armrest unless you pay extra or stretch to top spec trim. But there are seat back pockets, twin center vents and big door bins. And to keep the kids quiet on longer trips, you can specify a couple of extra rear USB ports into which they can plug their gaming devices. Fold out rear seat tables are optional too. We'll finish by heading back to the tailgate. We were talking earlier about the brand's helpful, simply clever features. Well, you find them in the most unlikely places in this car. Under the bonnet, for instance, there's an integrated funnel in the lid of the windscreen washer tank. And we'll pause on the way to the boot to notice another neat touch. This ice scraper built into the fuel filler cap. It even has an integrated tyre tread depth gauge. Raising the rear hatch can be a powered operation if you pay extra, in which case you get a useful tip to close function. But you don't really need it because the tailgate isn't particularly heavy. Once it's raised, you'll find yourself looking at another of this Scala's major selling points, this large 467 litre boot. OK, so that's some way off the 590 litre capacity you get in a Skoda Octavia. And a rival Honda Civic will also give you slightly more space. But it's about 25% bigger than you get in segment rivals like Seat Leon, Kia Seed and Hyundai's i30. And way bigger than the trunk you'd get in a Toyota Corolla or a Mazda 3. A neat touch is this grab handle that hangs down from the open tailgate so that even smaller adults we'll be able to reach up and pull it down. We're disappointed that Skoda doesn't include a variable height boot floor as standard. See if you can get your dealer to throw it in. Or we'd also like the double-sided boot mat, which has a wipe clean underside for the transport of muddy items. This is a very usable space with corner compartments on either side and the left-hand one with a lift-out panel you'd remove if you wanted to transport something particularly wide. There's no further space beneath the boot floor, but that's only because, unlike quite a few other rivals in this segment, Skoda hasn't neglected to include a space saver spare wheel. This boot also sets a record, in our experience, for the provision of bag hooks in a production car. There are no fewer than four provided, along with the usual four tie-down points. Plus, provided you avoid entry-level trim, you get a useful 12-volt socket too, which is a rarity in this class of car. Unfortunately, you won't be able to take lengthier items without disturbing rear seat passengers because there's no option for a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 seat back split. But once you flatten the 60-40 split backrest, a large 1,410 litre capacity is revealed. Scala pricing does, of course, sit between what you'd pay for Skoda's Fabia Super Mini and the brand's larger family hatch model, the Octavia. From launch, Scala asking figures varied from well under 17 to around £23,500, with one five-door body style available across three trim levels, base S, this mid-range SE version, and top SEL. With base spec, you can only have the smallest one-litre TSI petrol engine, in 95 and 115 PS forms, but plusher trim levels add to this with the 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS petrol unit we're trying here and a 1.6 litre TDI 115 PS diesel. Avoid entry level spec and the feebler 1 litre TSI unit and you'll be offered the option of DSG auto transmission for £1,250 more. Most Scala customers elect to find the extra premium, around £1,200, to upgrade themselves from base S to this mid-range SE trim level. And the majority opt for the 1-litre TSI petrol unit, usually paying the premium, just over £800, to upgrade from the base 95 PS unit to the 115 PS power plant. 
That leaves you with a typical Scala SE 1 litre TSI 115 PS manual gearbox package that from launch was priced at around £18,500. Not bad value by segment standards, as we'll see shortly. If you cover longer distances or particularly prioritise economy, a £20,000 budget gets you an SE spec 1.5 TSI petrol 150 PS unit or the 1.6 TDI diesel. Let's give you some Skoda range perspective on that. You're looking at needing a premium of around £2,500 to upgrade from the brand's Fabia Super Mini with the 1 litre TSI 95 PS unit to a Scala with exactly the same engine. Now, many will think that's some worth paying for the extra space of a family hatchback segment car, but as you may have seen us mention in other sections of this film, Skoda also has another family hatchback segment contender, the Octavia, which offers another 30 centimetres of body length over this Scala and has a slightly more upmarket interior. For that, of course, you'll pay a small premium, around £1,200, with the volume 1 litre TSI 115 PS petrol engine. But the difference between a Scala and an Octavia can be as little as around £500 if you're looking at the diesel unit. We'll leave you to make that decision. If you come down in favour of this Scala model, you'll want to know how its pricing proposition stacks up against competitor brand models. Very well is the answer. To give you some perspective here, we'll tell you that in today's market, prices for Focus Class family hatchback models tend to kick off between £18,000 and £19,000, but it's likely that the engine and spec you'll actually want will cost you well over £20,000. Against that background, Skoda's proposition, with prices starting at well under £17,000 and a typical model costing, as we said, around £18,500, looks very good indeed, particularly given that none of the established players in the class can beat this Scala either on boot space or in terms of rear seat legroom. That last stat is surprising in relation to Volkswagen's Golf and Seat's Leon, the two class rivals that share this Skoda's engine wear, since both sit on a supposedly larger class chassis than this car, specifically the Wolfsburg Group's full-sized MQB platform that's also used by the Czech brand's even more spacious Octavia. But no, both the Golf and the Leon are well behind a Scala when it comes to space for people and packages. Despite that, a Leon with the 1 litre TSI 115 PS engine will cost around £1,200 more than an equivalent Scala, and a Golf with that same power plant will cost you well over £3,000 more. We don't actually think, though, that many prospective Scala customers will realistically be cross-shopping this car against a Golf. They're more likely to be looking at a class favourite like Ford's Focus, the only other model in the sector offering an entry-level petrol unit with an output comparable with this Skoda's base 95 PS 1 litre TSI petrol unit. But the Focus variant in question, the 1 litre EcoBoost 85 PS derivative, costs nearly £2,000 more than the equivalent Scala. A more typical 100 PS Focus 1 litre EcoBoost derivative costs around £1,500 more than the 115 PS version of the Scala 1 litre TSI model. And you'll pay the same premium to get yourself an equivalent version of the other main volume player in the sector, Vauxhall's Astra. You might do better pitching the Korean contenders in this class against Scala pricing. Hyundai's pricing for its likeable i30 hatch is at a very similar level to volume versions of this Skoda. And the Kia Seed isn't far off either. But again, with these two, you'll get less interior space than this Czech model can offer. A Fiat Tipo is actually cheaper than an equivalent Scala. It'll cost about £1,500 less in base petrol form, though that advantage halves if you're looking at diesel power. But a Tipo will cost you vastly more to run than this Skoda, especially in petrol form, feels cheap inside and will depreciate much more rapidly. 
As for the other class contenders, well, Renault's Megane is priced more attractively than a Scala in diesel form and is more efficient too. But few want a diesel in this class these days and a base petrol Megane costs around £500 more than its Scala equivalent and will cost much more to run. The other possible segment contenders you could consider are easily dismissed if you're on any sort of budget here. The cheapest petrol version of Honda's Civic and Citroen's C4 Cactus cost over £19,000 and you'll pay in the region of £21,000 for the cheapest petrol version of cars like Peugeot's 308, Toyota's Corolla and the Mazda 3. Enough. We've done the comparisons and crunched the stats so you don't have to. If, having considered all of this, you've decided that it is indeed a Scala that really takes your interest, then the deal could be sealed Skoda's way here by a strong showing when it comes to the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Most of the key stuff you'll need, and actually some of the stuff you might want, is fitted right across the range. Even the base S variant gets 16-inch Alaris-style alloy wheels, tinted windows, powered heated door mirrors, and headlamps with LED technology for the dip beam and daytime running lights. Inside, there's air conditioning with a pollen filter, leather trim for the steering wheel, gear lever and handbrake, height adjustment for the driver's seat, a multifunction trip computer, a speed limiter and a space saver spare wheel. Media stuff is taken care of by a radio swing, six and a half inch center dash display and includes Bluetooth, two USB-C ports and a four speaker DAB audio system. Also standard across the range is use of this Czech brand's clever, freely downloadable Skoda Connect app. This allows you to remotely lock or unlock your Scala from wherever you are. If you've forgotten where you parked it, it'll give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find your car in a crowded car park, the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, the headlights or the horn. It'll also give you a vehicle health report, help you schedule servicing and give you various elements of extra driving data. So all of that comes with base trim. As we said earlier, though, most Scala customers buy in at this mid-range SE trim level, not only because of the wider choice of engines, but also because you have to stretch at least to this level to get the chance to pay extra for the tailgate design pack or the exterior design pack, exterior upgrade options that most customers for this car tend to want. You'll also need SE trim if you want the kind of classy, glass-fronted, smartphone-friendly touchscreen infotainment provision you'd get in a rival Leon or Golf, provided here by the brand's 8-inch Radio Bolero center dash display. This includes an upgraded 8-speaker audio system and the Czech brand's Smart Link smartphone mirroring system with its uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mirror link compatibility. SE trim also gives you near essentials like an alarm, rear parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, front fog lamps, cruise control and an auto dimming rear view mirror. You also get smarter Orion style 16 inch alloy wheels as well as a more smartly trimmed cabin lifted by the addition of a dashboard decor strip, a stitched front centre armrest, a multifunction steering wheel and chrome decor rings in the instrument cluster. Practical extra touches at this level in the range include storage compartments under the front seats, a sunglasses compartment in the roof liner, reading lights for the front seats, seat height adjustability and a vanity mirror for the front seat passenger, a 12 volt socket in the boot and even an umbrella built into the driver's door. So there you have it. SE spec gives you pretty much everything you really need in this Skoda. Still, there'll surely be customers seduced by the big car feel who want more. And for them, the really desirable SEL variant beckons. Here you get larger 17-inch Stratos-style alloy wheels, extra chrome interior trim, and seats trimmed with micro-suede black upholstery. 
In this case, these items are also embellished by features that you may have grown used to having in larger cars. Things like dual zone climate control, virtual cockpit digital instrument dials, power folding mirrors, high beam control and keyless entry. Other SEL features include privacy glass, a rear center armrest, floor mats, a color screen for the instrument binnacle trip computer, full LED rear lights with a scrolling function and a cornering function for the front fog lights. You also get a big car standard of infotainment provision, courtesy of Skoda's top Amundsen spec 9.2 inch infotainment screen. In addition to 3D navigation, this offers a 64 gigabyte hard drive, gesture control activation, and an optional Wi-Fi hotspot. Plus, the Amazon system unlocks extra functionality from that Skoda Connect app we were talking about earlier, adding in online route calculation, online voice control, and the option to download infotainment apps for things like news and weather. As you drive, the Connect app at this level can also give you an online map update and brief you on traffic movements and the local availability of fuel stations and parking spaces. The infotainment online services are free for the first year of ownership, then available on subscription thereafter. Right, enough with standard spec. Uh, let's now move on to the part of this film where we talk you through the various extra cost elements you may want to consider adding to the Scala trim level you've chosen. Our starting point here would be something we've already mentioned, the tailgate design pack and the exterior design pack, exterior upgrade options you can have on SE and SEL variants. The rear three-quarter view of this car really does look very plain if you don't go for one or other of these. Both packs include extended tailgate glass and full LED rear tail lights with scrolling indicators, but the exterior design pack we've got here also adds full LED headlights and a panoramic glass roof with an interior electric blind. It's the sort of really premium touch that the saving you'll probably be making with this car over established competitors might well enable you to afford. If you prefer, you can order the panoramic roof and the front and rear full LED headlights separately. What else? Well, the other most important box to tick is that for a variable boot floor, which sadly Skoda doesn't include with any of the trim levels. We'd want the double-sided boot mat too, which can be reversed to reveal a wipe-clean surface for the times you might have to carry muddy boots or muddy dogs. You might also want the heated front seat and washer nozzle package. An alternative winter pack gives you the same thing with heat for the rear seats too. On this mid-range SE model, you might well want to add in the virtual cockpit digital instrument dials and the upgraded Amundsen 9.2-inch center dash infotainment screen with its incorporated 3D navigation and extra media connectivity features. Wherever this package is fitted, there's the option to pay extra to have it with voice control. That's the really important stuff taken care of. Other optional features include headlamp washers, a couple of extra USB ports in the rear, a heated steering wheel, a rear view camera, front parking sensors and a park assist system to automatically steer you into spaces. There's adaptive cruise control, which can automatically keep you a safe distance behind the vehicle in front on the highway. And you could specify a powered tailgate, a dash cam system, and a wireless phone charging mat. With SE trim, you might want to add in keyless entry, carpet mats, high beam control, and dual zone climate control. If you do have climate control on your Scala, you'll also be able to add in an optional heated windscreen. Avoid base trim, and you'll be able to specify a drive mode select system that'll give you selectable drive modes that alter steering feel, throttle response and on DSG auto models gear shift timings too. On the top SEL variants you can also have a powered driver's seat, a sports steering wheel and a version of that drive mode select system with a lower stiffer sport chassis but we'd suggest you don't. This isn't really that kind of car. Practical extra touches you could add include a foldable or a removable tow bar. And we'd want the optional interior pack, which gives you a waste bin, 
a phone holder and fold-out trays for the rear seats. You might also want a smoker pack with an ashtray if you haven't yet kicked the habit. Earlier, we mentioned extras you could add into the boot. Well, for that area, you might also want to specify a netting system, which will give you a net behind the rear seat back and another on the floor, both aimed at keeping small items from rolling about. A plastic boot dish with or without a partition is available to protect the cargo area floor and an all-weather boot mat does much the same thing. A net partition and a dog guard are both available to separate the boot area from the passenger compartment, which might be useful if you have animals. And on that subject, for the rear seat, you can specify a protective mat and a dog safety belt. There's also a rear bumper protector to keep that area from loading scrapes. In the passenger compartment, all-weather interior mats can be added and you can add a separate rubber mat to cover the rear transmission tunnel. Front and rear mud flaps are available too. As for leisure pursuits, well, as you'd expect, you can specify a roof rack. This would enable you to take a roof box, a ski and snowboard box or a bike rack. If you specified the tow bar, you can also add a bicycle carrier that would take a couple of cycles. On to aesthetics. Now, bear in mind that unless you specify your Scala in the only standard colour offered, solid energy blue, uh, you'll need to be paying your dealer more for one of the other metallic, pearl effect or special colours. A shade, for instance, like the one we've got here, race blue metallic. There's also an even pricier, exclusive colour available, velvet red. Avoid entry-level trim and various alternative 16 and 17-inch alloy wheel styles are available. With top SEL spec, 18-inch rims are available too. You might also want to add in chrome window surrounds. And for the interior, you can lift things a bit by specifying decorative inserts that can be black or silver on an SE model or grey and beige on an SEL. Or you could go for the optional sport-themed interior, which gets you sports seats, a sports steering wheel, and decorative inserts. There's also the option of adding in decorative door sill covers, and either red, white, or copper-coloured ambient lighting. And with top-spec SEL trim, you can pay extra to blend that spec-level smart micro-suede upholstery with real leather inserts. On to safety. A standard on all Scalas is a front assist system that on the open road scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, warning you if one is detected and automatically braking if necessary. You get that same kind of functionality at urban speeds too, as part of a city emergency brake system included as part of the front assist package. This setup also includes predictive pedestrian protection that specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you and, if necessary, can initiate braking to avoid them. There's also a lane assist, which alerts you if you drift out of your lane on the highway. Plus, the Skoda Connect app we mentioned earlier includes an emergency call feature that will alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location if you have an accident and the airbags go off. All Scalas also get twin front, side and curtain airbags, Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure monitoring system and anti-whiplash front head restraints. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC stability control and an ASR traction control system. There's ABS braking, of course. A hill hold control feature stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. If you want more, then there's the option of a driver fatigue sensor that monitors your reactions for drowsiness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee if lethargy is detected. The high beam control you get on a top SEL model is optional at mid-range SE level to dip your headlights for you automatically at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And provided you've got a Scala fitted with power folding door mirrors, you'll be able to order optional blind spot detection, which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. It's also worth mentioning that all Scalas fitted with the top Amundsen infotainment system get traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs as you pass 
and displays them on the centre dash screen. You can pay extra for a driver's knee airbag and if you do, you'll be offered the further chance to specify a pack that gives you rear side airbags and something that Skoda calls Crew Protect Assist, a setup that senses when an impact is imminent, then braces the car to better withstand it by instantly closing the windows. One of the advantages of installing a Super Mini Derive platform in a family hatchback class car ought to be a weight saving and a corresponding improvement in running cost efficiency. A little disappointingly here, you get one but not the other. Thanks to its MQB A0 chassis, a Scala with a volume 1 litre TSA 115 PS engine is indeed up to 128 kilos lighter than a comparably powered version of the Skoda Octavia, which gets the Volkswagen Group's full-sized MQB Golf-style underpinnings. Such a Scala is actually 157 kilos lighter than arguably its closest rival, the 100 PS 1 litre EcoBoost version of the Ford Focus. But a 1 litre TSI 115 PS manual Scala records exactly the same WLTP rated combined cycle fuel figure as the two cars just mentioned, 50.4 mpg. And its NEDC rated CO2 return, 113 grams per kilometre, actually trails those two models by 6 grams per kilometre. So something must be not quite optimal somewhere. Perhaps we're being overly picky here. The figures just quoted are certainly very reasonable by class standards. The CO2 return, for instance, is much better than you get from comparable base petrol versions of competitors like the Kia Seed, the Hyundai i30 and the Renault Megane. But the overall fuel and emission figures are some way off what you'd get from efficiency leaders in this segment, like the Vauxhall Astra and the Peugeot 308. Given the interesting platform approach here, we'd hoped for better. The readings for the lesser 95 PS version of this three-cylinder, one-litre TSI unit are, by the way, virtually the same as those for the 115 PS derivative. Add a DSG auto box to that 115 PS model, and there's only a marginal efficiency effect, the figures falling only to 47.1 mpg and 116 grams per kilometre. It's interesting to note that the penalty for switching to the gutsier four-cylinder TSI petrol engine, the 1.5 litre 150 PS unit we're trying here, is also quite minor, even if you saddle it with a DSG auto gearbox that features in this test car. In this form, the Scala returns up to 45.6 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 113 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. That's thanks to cylinder deactivation technology that sees two of this power plant's four cylinders deactivated under light to medium throttle loads. The DSG setup also helps with a coasting function that at cruising speeds will disconnect the gearbox from the powertrain, leaving the engine to idle until you next need it. Plus, all the petrol engines get the usual industry efficiency aids like brake energy regeneration and an engine stop-start system to help them meet the current Euro 60 temp emission standards. If you want ultimate returns from your Scala, then because the Continental Market natural gas version isn't being imported and there are no plans for any sort of electrification here, you'll be pointed towards the rare 1.6 litre TDI 115 PS diesel version. At first glance, the figures of this TDI variant don't seem to offer a huge jump over those of the petrol model, 57.7 mpg and 108 grams per kilometre in manual form, but our experience suggests that they'll be easier to achieve in real-world driving. But then a TDI will cost you significantly more to buy and runs on pricier fuel, so it's very much swings and roundabouts. The TDI power plant gets a selective catalytic reduction filter to cut down on nitrous oxide and, like most modern diesels, uses a urea-based solution called AdBlue that's injected into the exhaust gas stream to help clean up emissions. Another financial burden you'll want to plan around is insurance, though the Scala helps here by sitting in lower groups than some of its direct rivals. And maintenance? Well, there's the choice between fixed or flexible servicing regimes, depending on whether your annual mileage is short or long. Service intervals are every 18,600 miles or every 24 months. 
the available Skoda Connect app has a proactive service element included, which, when activated, can send all the data needed from your car in advance to your local Skoda dealership prior to a service visit. We'll also mention that depreciation levels are very class competitive. Independent experts reckon that the predicted residual value for a typical Scala 1 litre TSI 115 PS SE manual model would be 41.12% based on 36 months and 30,000 miles. What else? Well, your car will come with three years of pan European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this model is protected by a 12 year anti corrosion package. Finally, while it's certainly true that other rivals better the three-year, 60,000-mile warranty that Skoda provides, you can extend your cover to four or five years by paying extra. Not that you really need to. The brand regularly tops independent consumer satisfaction surveys. According to real people, there are few more satisfying cars to own. The Scala might at first seem an answer to a problem entirely of Skoda's own making. People are comfortable with conventional hatchback shapes. Challenge them with something a bit different and it often becomes a niche seller or worse, ignored altogether. The Czech brand's Octavia hatchback is a good, practical, sensible and very well-priced car, but it is indeed different, refusing to fit neatly into the predefined package look many buyers expect. In contrast, this more conventional Scala model should be a much easier sell. Although it's shaped distinctly differently from, say, an equivalent Focus or Astra, customers can clearly see that those kinds of rivals offer direct competition. People like what they know and they know what they like. We always thought that this model's predecessor, the Rapid Spaceback, was an underrated car, and there's every chance the Scala will be too. But if you really don't want to pay an awful lot extra for the slush-moulded sophistication of a Golf, but want even more practicality and quite a few of the same engines, then you'll be well satisfied by what's on offer here. But will buyers previously foreign to the Skoda brand be won over by this car? Possibly. It won't suit those always yearning for a spirited drive, but otherwise, its list of attributes ought to be enough to earn a place on your family hatchback shortlist. After all, this model is more affordable than most of its rivals, and more spacious too. In addition, it's well-built, acceptably efficient, and to some eyes, really quite stylish. Plus, in an age where many features on new cars are, frankly, of quite limited use, the list of simply clever fitments included here, stuff like the integrated umbrella in the door and the ice scraper in the fuel filler cap, will endear this Scala to you if you're of a sensible mindset. There are more exciting class choices, to be sure, but by and large, you don't buy a family hatchback for excitement. All the reasons you would want such a thing are covered off here with typical Skoda thoroughness and with enough style and quality to make brand loyalists feel rather smug. This probably won't have been the car you started out wanting in this class, but it's just a chance that it might be the one you actually need.